Lately, I've been getting more questions about herpes and genital warts than anything else. So in this video, I'm talking bumps, lumps, and sores. Stick around. Hi guys, I'm Lane, your doctor on demand for fun and factual health education. Now, if you haven't seen my video on herpes, you might wanna check it out first. I've also got a video on warts and I'm posting both links in the description below. But today, I wanna to talk about how you can recognize herpes from warts. Yes, there are similarities, but in many ways, they're actually quite different. So if you're worried about bumps below, here are five things to consider. Number one. The type of lesion. Now, fundamentally, this is the biggest difference, what they look like. Warts typically present as a firm raised lump, often with a rough, even cauliflower-like appearance. Herpes, on the other hand, normally looks like this. The first one is a vesicle, which is basically a blister. See how it looks like it's filled with fluid? Very different to a wart. Sometimes when the blister ruptures, you are left with an ulcer, which is more indented into the skin. Number two, the time frame. This is also very important. Warts tend to present slowly over time, starting as tiny little bumps that are near impossible to see and growing. They can present for weeks, months, or even years. Sometimes they will go away on their own and sometimes they won't. Herpes lesions, on the other hand, tend to come and go. The sores may be present for anywhere between around five days to three weeks, but it's unusual for them to last for months. So if you have a lump down there that you're worried about, how long it has been present for is key to knowing the difference between herpes and warts. Number three, sexual history. Might sound obvious, but you don't get herpes from watching porn or from a toilet seat. You get it from having sex. Why? Because there has to be skin to skin contact. Now this is one thing that herpes and warts both have in common. Both are viruses that can live and lay dormant in skin cells, which means to transmit it from person to person, there has to be skin to skin contact and usually Friction. So unless you're playing Twister at a nudist resort, the only way you're gonna get herpes or warts is from having sex. Number four, location. Now, again, some similarities, but when it comes to herpes, it typically affects what we call mucosal surfaces. Now think of the skin on the inside of your lips. This is what a mucosal surface is, moist, pink, very sensitive. I'm not even trying to be dirty. On the genitals, mucosal surfaces are often under the foreskin, as well as the entrance to the vagina or even around the anus. Warts, on the other hand, are a little less bothered about where they pop up. Essentially, anywhere you have skin or a skin-like surface, you can get warts on your body. So on the genitals, you can get warts anywhere, including at the base of the penis, the scrotum, or even the pubic area. And finally, pain. Big one. Dead giveaway for herpes. Herpes hurts, remember that. Warts don't, or at least the lumps themselves are not usually sore. They're actually quite firm and tough. The only time I've actually seen warts cause pain is either when they get infected, which is often what can happen when you try to remove them, or if they're in a really awkward spot that causes pressure to the surrounding tissue. For example, people who have large warts on the sole of their feet will often describe it like walking on a pebble, which can be painful. But the wart itself is like a little nugget of scar tissue. I just made that up. Now check out my next video by clicking the link on your screen right now. Please consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date with new content. Stay healthy guys and see you soon.